paper and plastic. He's worth it. <laughs> On the street he sees walk, don't walk. He follows instructions. What else does he have in his heart to be? The buzz, the hive, the act of centuries that have passed him by. He doesn't know why the steps he takes are smaller, shortened by regret. Next door to his apartment, death moves in. The last rent controls fear, this box, this organ sense of sexuality that's available in New York's horizon line. Old death waits and sees, not a mistake, but this old man who comes home with his plastic bags and sets them down as if life is still a reward. He waits and mirrors this mistake so that if death comes too early, there'll be an excuse a caboose to ride before the engine of surprise pushes him into eternity. Death sleeps with his eyes open. Just in case the old man next door goes off and dies unknown. Even the clock, the stone that Sisyphus allows him to borrow, didn't know the old man would be filled with sorrow and regret and then die. Well, death has to keep his eyes open wide, just in case. The face doesn't come in the long hallway in which they see each other. No disgrace here to say no blood is somehow transfused between yesterday and infinity. Both stare into their eyes. There's a surprise there, they say, a sculptural sense of divinity. And yet there's something familiar in the old man's face that he sees without disgrace of everything that have passed before his eyes. He's in his attic of pictures that disintegrate, not with pain, just with the allowable sense of knowing life has passed by. Wow. He bends. He sits and lets the eyes of some sculpture that depends upon his heart. He falls apart knowing that if he pays enough pain, he'll have another day on his composure, on his game, on that which lives in the little pocket of his life. He leans back, breathes heavily, and dreams. Next door, death dresses in <coughs> gabardine. Stretch the little silk lapels of his heart and his chest, causing sparks of angels to come and sing to him of other dead geniuses. Beethoven first. Bach couldn't satisfy his thirst. And next door, why is there are angels of surprise singing a hymn to him? He makes it up stuff. He pushes on the electronic window of his day and the tick-tock comes to support him, to give him an opportunity to travel this canal of possibilities. The candles on his cake are more light than mistake, and he loves being alive. Death sleeps. The old man dreams. He knows he'll only have a dream for an hour or two. Half of it he won't remember. It will threaten his daylight too much. And the stuff of his routine, well, he hugs to it. It is the dream coming alive, the fantasy, that gives him an arc of reality that he can believe in. He holds on. He wants to stay alive. Death puts on its tap shoes and dances. Oh, baby. What you gonna do when the night doesn't know your name? When the flame of it all finds itself to be cold, not hot? When the stop you should have jumped over? When the little pond of all things that grow without God's name? It was all up to you, without guilt or shame, to take the chance to volunteer for what the risk might be. Death doesn't take risks. Death takes your reality. Oh, babies, dance a bit. Hear the music, <coughs> it's for you. Take it, you don't have to own it or excuse yourself. You need no legal sense to defend your worth in life. You've always been worth life. 
why didn't you know? Oh, sweethearts, here it comes. Loosen that little tourniquet of denial. The Freudian cigar that's only a cigar, it doesn't make sense anymore. And the star you are falls in front of your eyes. You know why it does that? Because, babies, you're still alive. Good night.